We are still tracking Lee, of course, and also some of the coolest air the United States, part of it anyway, has seen all season long. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is in this video. We are going to be talking about Lee. It looks like it's trying to focus itself, main, maybe direct impacts to either New England, Canada, or a little bit of both. We're going to break all that down. Then we're going to check in on that autumn feel that a lot of the lower 48 is going to feel over the next couple of days. It's also going to help to bring some much-needed rain to places that need it most. Texas, I'm looking at you. We're going to break that down. And then we're going to break down the rest of the tropics at the end of the video. Another wave has emerged off of Africa. We'll talk about where that could be headed over the next 7 to 10 days. Before we get into the video, before we break down Lee, which is still a monster... You have to hit subscribe. Please do that if you want to stay updated on the weather, not only for the tropics, but also the weather beyond hurricane season. Hit that thumbs up button if you find this content helpful. Lee really hasn't moved, and it continues to slow down. It's now to the west-northwest at about 6 miles an hour. I know, we talked about this the other day, that it's a little anxious for us in parts of the Bahamas, Florida, and the southeast corner of the United States. I will show you why we do not need to be anxious in just a minute here, but latest on Lee again, still a powerful major hurricane, winds of 115 miles an hour, and it is just chilling there in the southwest Atlantic, hardly moving at all. Here is the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. We're going to break down some models in just a couple of minutes, but I first want to show you the official forecast again, what everyone needs to pay attention to from the National Hurricane Center. Still by Saturday, 8 o'clock in the morning, a strong Category 1 hurricane or a strong, a strong storm, a low-end Category 1 hurricane at 75 mile per hour uh, maximum sustained winds. It becomes post-tropical by the time we get to Sunday, but this is likely going to be a powerful post-tropical system. What that means is that it's losing its tropical characteristics. Tropical systems get their energy from the warm ocean waters. This is going to merge with an upper-level system, and it's going to either A, get it some of its energy from the warm water still, and then B, we're going to see that difference in temperature be injected into this thing, and then it's going to become more of that hybrid system. So there you go as we move into Sunday morning, likely a powerful system Maybe coming ashore in Maine, maybe coming ashore towards Nova Scotia. Regardless, it looks like impacts to land are going to be likely. This is going to be a very large storm, so pretty much throw the cone out. We'll get into that a little bit later on into the video as well. Latest computer models. Again, these are coming in through, the, uh, through Tuesday afternoon. And they are all very tightly packed that they this storm goes west of Bermuda, although a tropical storm watch is in play. We're going to see impacts because the storm is so wide. But look at this. Very tightly packed as we get into the weekend, Saturday into Sunday. Again, focusing either on extreme eastern Maine, parts of New Brunswick, and then into Nova Scotia as well. So we are watching that very, very closely again because this is going to be a large and a powerful maybe still tropical at the time, but if not, a powerful non-tropical system kind of blasting through that's kind of that hybrid mix as we just talked about. Here's the upper level pattern. This is why if you're in Florida or the southeast corner of the United States or even the Carolinas and mid-Atlantic that you do not have to worry about this slow go and this lack of that northerly turn just yet. Here is Lee. This is Margo out here. And here is our nice giant Bermuda High. You see that clockwise flow right there. We're also going to be watching the dip in the jet stream. This is one of the things that we were watching last week that we talked about was uncertain. Models were predicting, and they did a very nice job, again, pinning this dip in the jet stream in the deep south. This is what is going to protect the southeast corner because eventually, in the next day or so, Lee is going to feel the tug of that system and then go in this direction. This is why the models are so tightly packed because now that this dip in the jet stream is over the United States upper air network, it's being sampled much, much better. We're getting much better data in and there's much less discrepancy between the models as to how that dip in the jet stream is going to behave. So that is what kind of pulls Lee North. You see it kind of tug. It, pinwheels back up way into Canada. There's the main upper low. There's the piece of it, and it continues to lift it north. Now, where the question remains is to, is this going to be a more main thing? Is this going to be more of a New Brunswick, Nova Scotia thing? Is this secondary dip in the jet stream? Does this yank Lee further back to New England, New England or does it, does it, move, does it escape it? 
and kind of lift it up. This brings me to my next thing. Before we get into where these kind of pieces of the steering pattern are right now and some of that cooler air coming to the United States as a result of this. So this is all intertwined. The steering mechanism for Lee initially is what is also supplying the cooler air to the lower 48 of the United States. So let me bring over my next map here. This is going to be the GFS ensembles. I show you those lines all the time, the ensembles on the line if you're hanging with this channel, and I hope you do. And if you want to stay updated, please hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up if you're still with me. Look at all the, all these numbers represents where the center of the storm could be. Where you see the kind of grouping there, that's the main area that's kind of closer to the ensemble mean here. A faster storm is going to be is going to tend to miss that second dip in the jet stream and then go towards Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. You see a few members up here way out ahead of the next grouping down here southeast of Cape Cod. A slower storm is going to have the tendency to go further to the west. So if this thing remains slow over the next 24 to 48 hours and is behind schedule, it's going to have a higher tendency to actually come ashore in Maine or come ashore in southeast New Hampshire or even maybe northeast Massachusetts. If it's faster, it's going to have an opportunity, a higher one anyway, to come ashore towards uh, New Brunswick or in the Nova Scotia. Regardless, impacts are likely going to be felt, certainly along the coast, all up and down the United States. I showed you in a previous video, and we'll get back into that over the next couple of days. The wave heights are going to be significant. The rip current risk, beach erosion, going to be significant from Florida all the way to Maine, regardless of where this thing comes ashore, because this is so big, it's so powerful. But nonetheless, we're watching for the potential for some significant direct impacts from wind, from heavy rain, things of that nature, uh, mainly in Cape Cod, mainly in New Hampshire, and mainly in Maine. And then, of course, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, just in that corner of New England, we are going to be watching that closely. So again, keep it here. We got you covered through the week as this heads into the weekend. All right. Here's where we stand right now. This is the water vapor imagery. I love to show you guys this too because this kind of illustrates the atmospheric motion. Where are the weather systems at now? It uh, kind of shows the moisture at about 15,000, 20,000 feet above your head here. Here are the features. Here, of course, is powerhouse Hurricane Lee hanging out right here in the South Atlantic, north of the Caribbean. Here is our dip in the jet stream, our upper, upper low. This is going to continue to dig into the deep south, and as it does so, it's going to finally give a kick to Lee. It's going to start tugging on Lee and to make this go further north. So again, that's one of the things that we were talking about last week. I know a lot of people were showing the Irma models. We talked about this, and I kind of got on a rant on this in a previous video again. Because a lot of people were like, no, it's going to keep on going west like Irma did. Irma was a much different situation. Number one, it didn't have this dip in the jet stream where it is right now. And it was also the reason why it kept going west. It wasn't, it was a Bermuda high that was just not being sampled well. We don't have data out there. And after we finally got good Hurricane Hunter data, we were able to realize that that Bermuda high was much, much stronger, uh, way stronger than what it typically is and then helped push Irma further west before finally being pulled up through much of the state of Florida, of course. But the Bermuda High is not as strong right now, and we also have this dip in the jet stream. So that is why, again, everybody in Florida, in the southeast corner of the United States, in the mid-Atlantic, we're good from Lee. Okay, We are good unless you're right along the coast. We could have some big-time coastal impacts still from the powerhouse that is Lee. Getting into the temperature side of this that dip in the de jet stream is finally going to deliver cooler than normal temperatures as far south as dallas into the plains where we just had that massive heat wave into the great lakes region as well into parts of the northeast and then even into a little bit of florida this is over the next few days really up into the next six or so days going forward that's all because of that same dip in the jet stream and i want to show you this on the temperature on the forecast temperature perspective so this is going to be wednesday afternoon notice the cool air isn't everywhere the pacific northwest we are still going to bake if i have anybody tuning in from the pacific northwest post in the comments where you're tuning in from i'm also going to po post in here to the the description or the uh the timeline the time code so you can kind of fast forward along as well if you want to get to the secondary part of this tropical update but look at that detroit three o'clock on wednesday 68 degrees chicago we're in the low 60s for highs minneapolis we're talking mid 60s remember 
we were just having those heat indices well north of 100 degrees. That is all changing. Look at that. Burlington, Vermont, Wednesday, upper 60s into the low 70s. A cool overnight. Same deal on Thursday. This is going to be so refreshing. Check this out in Dallas. We're talking 78 degrees on Thursday, 82 in Memphis. Sorry, San Antonio and Houston. We largely miss out on the much cooler air, but we do get in on a little bit of rain. Look at this. This is September 13th. This is on Wednesday with a few scattered showers around. And then we also have higher rain chances again moving in on part of Thursday with the secondary system. So there's September 15th. You see that right there. Much needed. San Antonio, I do think we largely miss out on all the rain. Same thing for us in Houston, but it's a little bit. We will take what we can get, and we desperately need it. Again, the drought continues to expand. We've been dry and blazing hot for a lot of the summer in Texas and across part of the plains. Dallas, we are in that extreme drought. We have an exceptional drought for parts of the San Antonio area into Houston. We need the rain bad. We're not going to get a ton. Again, we don't want it all at once because the ground needs to be able to hold it. But nonetheless, we're going to get a little bit. Amarillo, we could be pushing an inch or two. Dallas, we could be heading towards anywhere from a half inch to an inch. Houston, look at this. San Antonio, half inch to an inch as well. South Tex Texas, just a little bit of rain coming away, but we will take what we can get. Positive note, again, that is some of the big changes that we highlighted again in the thumbnail because it has been so long since we have seen good rain in the great state of Texas. All right, here's what we have going on. There is Lee again. There is Margo almost holding hands with their outflow. Kind of cool that the two storms are kind of touching with their outflow. Here is this hodgepodge of thunderstorms that, again, is going to take a long time to get its act together over the next couple of days because there's a bunch of thunderstorms out there competing to be the dominant one, the dominant center here. And you see, again, that big red area. That is where we have the development zone listed by the National Hurricane Center, highlighted by the Hurricane Center for potential development over the next seven days. It is likely going to happen. But it's just, where does it go afterwards? The GFS wants to keep this low and closer to land. The Euro wants to take this out. We're going to have to watch it closely, but there is going to be a weakness in the Bermuda High. You see it kind of right there. So if we can get this thing strong, kind of like what the GFS showed, there's September 15th. We're already at a tropical depression at least, maybe even a name storm by that point. But nonetheless, the GFS wants to keep this further to the west. It does get it kind of close to land and then just meanders out there, very similar to Lee. Again, we're going to watch it. The Euro does lift it up and out much sooner. So we like the Euro representation. It's done pretty good with the track of these storms over the last uh, couple. So it is believable that this thing goes up and out. Again, there is a nice weakness in that Bermuda High. The storms tend to feel that. And that is their escape route safely back out to sea. But again, and in the short term, we are watching uh, what happens with Hurricane Lee. Again, it looks like it is going to target land. Parts of New England, parts of the Canadian Maritimes are going to be under the gun for that. And by the way, this is also September 22nd. This is way out in the future. That's 10 days away before we're even looking for anything, uh, potentially to do anything. So again, just like with Lee, we don't have a lot of data. The further out you go, that data becomes less reliable. So it's kind of that wait and see. I know it's annoying and I know it's anxious, but that's the whole deal. Again, we'll keep a close eye on that one further down the road. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, again, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help it a lot. And I appreciate all the new subscribers and everybody tuning in. We love to have you. It's been great interacting with everybody. Thank you so much for the great questions and comments. Appreciate you guys. If you want to stay updated on the weather, and especially as we venture through the rest of the peak of hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. And we will catch you next time.